Welcome to another AP Chemistry video. Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're learning about acids and bases. Now, this is part of my uh, complete AP Chemistry, complete general chemistry series available here on YouTube. So if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss a thing. Now let's get started. When we talk about acids and bases, Acids and bases are compounds that have been studied for hundreds, if not even thousands of years. For example, if we think about acids, well, they've been known for corroding metals and for being used to be able to clean certain other types of materials. For example, you may have heard that if you take uh, Coca-Cola, you know, there's an acid in Coca-Cola, phosphoric acid, and it is able to clean off the corrosion found on car battery terminals. It's, it's pretty good for that. Uh, acids, if you drink uh, things that have acids in them like uh, fruit juice or lemon juice, you'll find that they have a sour taste to them. Oh, vinegar is also an example of that. On the other hand, bases are known for their cleansing properties. If you take a look at lye soap, for example, or just most any soap, it has a certain uh, basic property to it. Uh, drain cleaner is an example of that too. If you take a base solution and you rub it uh, between your fingers, and of course only do this if it's very dilute, like soap, you'll find that it feels slippery between your fingers. I do want to let you know I'm not encouraging you to eat chemicals or to you know put them on your skin. Uh, th these would only be in very safe uh, situations or things that are very uh, dilute. Now, before we go much further, what is an acid? Well, an acid, very simply stated, is anything that produces hydrogen ions, H plus ions, in a solution. So, to make, the, to make that even simpler, we could say that it's, any, it's anything that has a formula starting with hydrogen. So that would include things like hydrochloric acid, hydrofluoric acid, nitric acid, we have acetic acid here, sulfurous carbonic acid. In this AP Chemistry course, if you've uh, been slogging through this whole thing, you found that we've already discussed acids quite a bit. And so these acids, hopefully, are some that you're fairly familiar with at this point and already know some properties of. On the other hand, what is a base? Well, we haven't spent quite as much time on bases in this course, but simply put, a base is anything that produces hydroxide ions in a solution. So if you look at the formula for a base, you'll find that the most simple bases have formulas that end with OH. They are hydroxides, if they're ionic compounds at least. So that would include things like sodium hydroxide, uh, calcium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. We've got all these hydroxides here. So those, in, in their most simplest form, are the bases. Now, there are several ways of describing acids and bases. In AP Chemistry, we talk about two definitions. And this definition of acids and bases uh, was produced by the Swedish chemist Svante Arrhenius. And that's why sometimes we say these are, uh, these are Arrhenius acids or these are Arrhenius bases. If a compound starts with hydrogen, we call it an Arrhenius acid, or if, it's con or if its formula ends with hydroxide, it's an Arrhenius base. Uh, we want to specify that because here in a few minutes we'll talk about another definition that's a, that's a bit more inclusive. Now, when you take an Arrhenius acid and it's dissolved into water solution, it dissociates very simply into its uh, component ions. So for example, in the case of hydrochloric acid, if you take that, you'll find that it dissociates into hydrogen ions and into chloride ions. And it's a it's a one-to-one -one ratio, as you can see from the formula and the stoichiometry there. If we take uh, perchloric acid and we allow that to dissociate into water, we have the same thing. We have the hydrogen ions and we have the perchlorate ions that are produced. This is what happens when you dissociate Arrhenius acids. And we'll talk about talk about this a bit later, about how some acids dissociate all the way and some don't. That's the, what's going to be in our next video. Now, uh, an Arrhenius base will do the same thing. It's going to dissociate very simply when it's added to water. So potassium hydroxide, one of the most common ones, 
it breaks apart into its component ions, just like pretty much all uh, ionic compounds will, well, will do if they are able to dissolve in water. So potassium ions and hydroxide ions, and that's what an Arrhenius base does, or calcium hydroxide. Now this one might be a little trickier because it has two hydroxides. So you've got to balance the equation with a two in front of the hydroxide, but it's basically the same thing. These are just breaking apart, uh, dissociating into their component ions when they get dissolved into water. Now let's take an example here. Let's say we have a 0.7 molar solution of calcium hydroxide, and it's prepared from solid calcium hydroxide in distilled water. Determine the concentration of hydroxide in the solution. Some of you might be able just to look at that and tell what the answer is. But let's go ahead and work this out in its, uh, in its complete way here. We want to realize that this is the balanced equation for the dissociation of calcium hydroxide when it's dissolved in water. And if the concentration of the original uh, calcium hydroxide solution here is 0 0.70, we can write that down, and the mole ratio between the calcium hydroxide and calcium would be 1 to 1. So that means that calcium ions would be 0 0.70 molar. Now that's not what the question was asking, but if it did, then we could say that. But how about hydroxide? Well, it's a 1 to 2 ratio. So guess what? That means that its concentration is twice as much as the others. It's 1.40 molar. And so that's the answer for the concentration of hydroxide in that solution. So you might have to, to, to be able to do that. Once again, this is just simple stoichiometry, simple solution chemistry. Now, like I said a minute ago, the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases is really a very limiting definition. The fact is there are lots and lots of, of solutions and, and, and substances that are acidic or basic that are, not, that, that are not Arrhenius acids or bases. Their formulas don't start with hydrogen. Their formulas don't end with hydroxide. And if we just stuck with the Arrhenius definition, we would exclude so many things that we need to talk about in chemistry. So that's why we have another definition. And this is, is a definition that was produced by the two chemists, Johann Bronsted and Thomas Lowry. And they basically said that, hang on here, you can't have an acid unless you have a base. They basically said that acids and bases go hand in hand. Acids and bases react with each other to form another acid and another base. And so here's an example of that. Let's say we have this simple acid here, formic acid, H-C-O-O-H, -O -O and we add this to water. Well, if this happens, we find that two products are made. One of those is the H3O plus ion. And by the way, that ion is one that we're going to encounter quite a bit in acid-base chemistry. We call that the hydronium ion. And then the other product, if we take the H3O plus out of this, we see that what's left is COOH a negative. So this is what we have in this reaction. The acid reacts with water. And so if formic acid is an acid and it's reacting with water, then guess what? Water in this reaction has to be a base. I know that we don't usually think of water as a base, but it is in this reaction. Acids react with bases. That's what Bronsted and Lowry said. Now, their full definition, they said that an acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor. Now, before we get too far into the weeds here, remember that a hydrogen atom, most of the time, is just a proton and an electron buzzing around it. If we take that electron away and make it H+, plus, guess what? H+, plus is just a proton hanging out by itself. So when we say a proton donor, we mean it's an H+, plus donor. And a base is a proton acceptor or an H+, plus acceptor. So let's take a look at that example again. If you look at the equation, 
you can see that what's happening here is the acid HCOOH is donating an H plus to the water. And that's why in the product side, you know, water has received that H plus and it's now H3O plus, you know, and the acid, the HCOOH has donated the acid or has donated the, the proton rather, the H plus. And so what's left after it's donated, it's only down to COOH a negative. So we can say that the formic acid, that's the acid, water is the base. Now, this is a reversible reaction, so on the other side of the arrow, we can say the other we can say the same thing. There's an acid and a base over here. Except we call those something else. We call this the conjugate acid, and what's left from the old acid is the conjugate base. So we can look at every acid-base reaction according to Bronsted and Lowry and say that there's an acid and a base reacting. And the products are a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. And so we can actually link those together and call these conjugate acid-base pairs. So here's the acid, and here is its conjugate base over here. Notice that they kind of look the same. The conjugate base just doesn't have the H plus on the front of it, right? And the same thing with the base and the conjugate acid. The base has one H plus less than the conjugate acid. So we can link up conjugate acid-base pairs by looking at the balanced equation. So let's take a look at the Bronsted-Lowry definition here and, uh, and apply that in this question. So for this acid dissociation reaction below, let's label the acid and let's label the base and let's label the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. So let's do that first. So the acid would be this compound right here at the beginning that has the H on the front of it, right? So that's the acid. And remember, acids always react with bases. So if this is an acid, then guess what? Water has to be a, a base. And what would the conjugate acid be? Well, it would be the H3O plus, wouldn't it? It's the acid that has one more H plus than the, than the water, uh, than the base here. So that's our conjugate acid. And that means that the cyanide would have to be the conjugate base. So we'll put that in here. So we have part, parts A, B, C, and D finished. Now, number two says identify the two conjugate acid-base pairs. Once again, we just have to link up you know, the acid with the conjugate base that looks like it. So we have that pair right there. And here's the other conjugate acid-base pair. Now, in case you're having trouble recognizing the, these, just remember that in every conjugate acid-base pair, the acid is always going to have one more proton, one more H plus, than the base. And that's what we have here. There's the conjugate base, and the acid has an additional H plus tacked onto the front of it. Same thing with the base and the conjugate acid. Let's try one more example here. Let's consider the dissociation of ammonia in water. And I've, I've gone ahead and put the formula for ammonia there. Let's write the base dissociation equation for ammonia. Well, remember that all of these substances have to react with water. So we're going to have to add water to this to make it a nice solution. So we're adding water to it. And then what are the products going to be? Well, remember, if this is a base, if ammonia is a base, one of the products will have to be its conjugate acid. And the conjugate acid of anything is just add an H plus to it, right? So one of the products will have to be NH4 plus. So here's one of the products. And then if water is the acid, then its other product has to be the conjugate base of that. So if we take away an H plus from water, we're left with OH negative. Hopefully that makes sense at some level. Whenever we have a base, hopefully you would kind of expect hydro hydroxide to be one of the products, right? So uh, remember, whenever you're writing these Bronsted-Lowry acid and base dissociation equations, uh, if you're dissociating an acid, you should expect to have hydronium as one of the products, H3O+. If you're, if you're, a, if you're dissociating a base, 
you should expect hydroxide to be one of the products just because you know it's a base now that's part a let's identify the base the acid and those other two things there so the base would be what we started with so there's our base and remember bases react with acid so that means that water is an acid in this case isn't it now that's interesting because a minute ago we just said that water was a base right well this time water is an acid anytime you have a substance that can sometimes be an acid and sometimes be a base we actually have a name for that that's called amphoteric and so water is one probably the most common of the amphoteric substances it can act as an acid or as a base and we'll actually find several others as we go through the next four lessons on acid base chemistry now what is the conjugate acid well here's the base ammonia is the base so the conjugate acid would have to have one more H plus than that so that would be the ammonium wouldn't it that's our conjugate acid and that means hydroxide would have to be our conjugate base and then part C says point out the two conjugate acid base pairs well we see a base here and there's its conjugate acid and then water would pair up with hydroxide as a conjugate acid base pair so can you write these examples or can you write these uh, dissociation equations we have a few examples here I hope that this helps you to get started on this in the acid base videos I'm gonna be working lots and lots of examples that's just because there's so much going on and it can be very difficult if we don't do enough examples so you'll find that these videos are a little bit longer perhaps and more involved but if you follow these through I think you'll understand it if you learn something from the video if you'd be so kind as to hit that like button I would really appreciate it uh, and subscribe if you haven't already done so uh, my name is Jeremy Krug I've been teaching AP chemistry for over 20 years and I want you to get a five on your AP exam if you're taking general chemistry I want you to get an A in your class thanks for watching and I hope to see you again on my channel where we can learn some more chemistry together